Ron Harris here for MuscleDevelopment.com. Coverage of the 2021 Olympia Weekend, brought to you by High Tech Pharmaceuticals. Standing here with Milos the Mind Sarshev. We had a few divisions, but we're going to talk about Classic Physique. Classic Physique is a very, very popular division now. Chris Bump said the defending champion, did he come in and bring enough to keep the title? I say yes. Did he look as great as last year? To me, better conditioning last year. I think he was a little bigger. Milos didn't see it that way. Well, no, let me tell you, uh, I, I said that many times, 2020, uh, Chris Bumstead really made me a believer. He was like so overpowering, like there was no question. Uh, I really uh, didn't see him beating in back double bites, I suppose, guys like uh, Brian and, and uh, uh, Terrence. Yeah. Uh, but last year he did, oh my God. So this year I was looking for this uh, five, six, seven pounds improvement in the pretty much same conditioning. You know, he didn't really bring the same conditioning. Uh, of course, for me, there is no question he's going to win. Yeah. But did he improve? Uh, I, I don't see the more size. Uh, I've seen it in some videos leading to the show. Uh, so I was expecting that now I'm going to be even more impressed with Bechdel biceps. And, uh, and uh, uh, for me, he was tad off in comparison to uh, last year's edition. Does he still wins? Yes, hands down. Even though... Brion is at his all-time best, I believe, and uh, Terence as well. Yeah. Terence is sharp, razor sharp, drier, you know. So you know, I was comparing uh, two different things once by uh, classical rules and by bodybuilding rules. So back in 2019, I said there's no way that Chris Bumstead can beat Brion and George Peterson in uh, in uh, bodybuilding terms, especially because classic physique doesn't have a, a triceps front light spread. Uh, you know, most muscular but he has a front and back double biceps. So somebody with the weaker arms, biceps, and weaker back could not win that contest. You know, but then in the 2020, I said even by bodybuilding uh, uh, rules, he wins. He, he wins. He is, you know, some people you know make the argument he could go to the open division and be super competitive. And there was that video of him and uh, uh, Big Rami a couple of days after the Olympia uh, on some photo shoot. He actually looked better than Rami, if you ask me. You know, so not to go to, as far as Jay Cutler said that he can uh, win Open Division Olympia, but uh, for a classic rules, he's a you know poster child for a classic division. He has that structure, and structurally he still dominates. He's tall, wide, super small waist, sweeping ties, complete X frame. Uh, so for me, actually the closest guy to him would be uh, one of my favorites, Urs Kalichansky. Yeah. You know, Urs Kalichansky is that uh, uh, similar frame, similar physique, similar height, a little bit shorter. You know, so when you compare uh, apples to apples and oranges to oranges, you know, I wish that Urs just get that call out next to, uh, you know, Chris, he didn't. Uh, Urs definitely, uh, you know, made a name for himself today. You know, I think he's gonna be their top five uh, contender. Uh, I don't think, of course, he has a, a right now position to, to be challenging Brion and Terence. Uh, but he, he is there. I, I think he can beat Alex Cabrnero and, uh, and move to the fifth place. So, Urs, hell of a job. You, you made yourself, your, your mom, your brother, everybody, the whole family proud. Uh, second place. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm confused myself. Brion is at his all time best. He was two times champion. Okay. But Terence is a runner-up last year, and he came improved. I said that Terence was not as good as uh, Arnold Classic. Conditioning-wise, he catch up what he needed to, you know, uh, come up with from the back, but even from the front. Now he's razor sharp front to back. But then when you look at Classic Physique, you know, you, you want to do that uh, V taper, and then the front of the biceps matter a lot. So Terence doesn't have a great arms. Right. Brion has a much better arms. Right. So how do you judge that? Uh, Brian improved on the V taper. You know, uh, I, I was saying this was his downfall. He couldn't match that crazy uh, V taper differential of uh, uh, Chris Bumstead. Uh, but uh, and, and even Terence. Terence has that uh, super small waist, very classic. He was angling himself perfectly. So right now, for my money, uh, Terence is second. But I wouldn't be surprised if if they give it to Brian. Is that close? You know, we were talking maybe about the back double biceps. Back double biceps, by bodybuilding terms, <laughs> okay, I, I think that uh, Terence and Brian are sharper than uh, uh, Chris. 
uh, but Chris, uh, Chris's frame and enough muscle and uh, you know just that wow physique. This is still going to take over, uh, I believe. Now turning around, uh, abs and thighs, right? Uh, Chris has a great vacuum. Doesn't have a super deep abs, but then again, he looks very good in that pose. So you're going to take it away. Side chest. It's Chris's pose. He does, he does it very well. Uh, Terence is very good, but so is Brion. So this is that apple orange. Who's going to take it? Chris is solidified in first place. There's, like he said at the press conference, the real contest is for a second place. Let, let's face it. Let's face it. Going into this show, that's how it was. I mentioned the only way he can lose the contest if he falls asleep and doesn't you know, come to the show. But uh, for me... Set your alarm, Chris. Yeah. But for me, it was not as dominating as last year, right? So, uh, you know, the, as Logan Franklin likes to say, closing the gap. You know, some guys are closing a gap. Now, uh, who else? Uh, there was uh, Ramon yeah. from Brazil. That Hold on, do you have Cambernero in fourth or do you have Ursus? Okay, for me, yeah. I think the judges have Alex at four, on yeah. four by the positioning, right? But uh, I'm speaking my mind. I, I think that... Uh, uh, closest physique to Chris Bumstead would be Urs Kalichansky. The miracle bear on Instagram, guy. Bear, yes, uh, you know, such a wonderful, passionate guy, loving bodybuilding. He is into this 100%. I mean, he is so young and there's years ahead that he's going to be a top contender. I wish they put him next to uh, Chris, you know, just, you know, so can, people can realize that similarity that uh, V Taper. And he it might up. happen tonight at the confirmation uh, round. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, and, uh, uh, Earth is sharp as can be. I mean, condition is nailed. Uh, I told him before uh, when he won the Chicago show, yep. he still needs to improve a little bit on the, in arms department. But look, Chris uh, Chris Bamsa was winning with the uh, weak weaker arms, so it's not maybe a requirement as much as in the bodybuilding rules. But the classic rules, let's face it, Terence doesn't have a great arms, right? So you know, there are a little bit differences. Uh, so I see that uh, Alex Cabrera is probably fourth in the judging score sheets, but uh, in my book of a uh, classic beauty of the physique, uh, Earth would be uh, you know definitely fourth. Uh, sixth, uh, probably Ramon from uh, Brazil. I don't know his last name. I, know. I just yeah. had it, and I can't. It's Cariz, Carizia, Caresia, something like that. Yeah. They always have three names in Brazil. Uh, I, I think that uh, Ramon has a beautiful physique. I think that Chris is here to uh, prepare him because Chris was, uh, you know, <laughs> screaming behind me. So I assume, for me, uh, Ramon was not in a crystal sharp condition. You know, he needed to be sharper. Because let's face it, classic physique guys bring much better condition than open division guys. <laughs> you know, you know. So you know, this is kind of expected requirement for a classic physique. Uh, who else? There was uh, a lot of people were asking me about Robert Timms, who was not in the first call out. A lot of people thought he was going to be the one to push Bumstead because he's tall, yeah. he's wide, he's got that big back, big arms, big shoulders. To me, his legs are really what hurt him today. He, he's, it's classic, but you still need to have legs that match your upper body. That's how it is. Look, Robert is the most wonderful guy. And uh, many times when I say something, then I uh, regret it. Maybe the people are going to take it against me. But uh, facts are facts. His upper body is open uh, bodybuilding, uh, six, top six division, yeah. and his legs a man's physique. Yeah. You know, he could might as well, you know, use the shorts. Uh, <laughs> I mean, sorry, but uh, relax, uh, right? Yeah. Just, but uh, <laughs> you know, the, the discrepancy is so big yeah. that uh, you lose this completely balance. So how can unbalanced physique be like in the top of the classic? Uh, physique? That's why he didn't make a top uh, call out. Because, uh, let's face it, the, the upper body that he has, we would all kill for. I mean, it's one of the best upper bodies that I've seen. But legs, uh, you know, I understand that uh, he's trying to, you know, angle them in a certain way. But it's very visible. These are professional judges that do this for a living. They know what they're looking for. So, you know, they, they, that's uh, more than obvious. With the bigger legs, he's contender for the title. So put another year of, of hard work into, into the legs and, and uh, then you're going to definitely be there because upper body is unmatched. So Brian Jones was fifth place last year. Uh, at the Arnold, he was off. I was hoping two weeks he could pull it together, get, get back into that condition that got him fifth place last year because one, one of the best physiques in classic Brian Jones, 
but the condition just wasn't there. Yes, uh, Brian just was that uh, wonder, can he contest for a title before the contest until we saw him at the Arnold Classic when his uh, you know, stock came down considerably because uh, he just wasn't as impressive as we, was, uh, we were expecting. Now, he was put right next to uh, uh, Robert Thames, and uh, now you can see that even his beautiful upper body cannot match somebody like uh, Robert Thames, right? And then his conditioning was not really there, and then from the back, he still has a weakness that uh, back double biceps uh, is not up to his chest and shoulders and arms. You know, so in a classic physique, uh, it should be that classic look, beautiful, aesthetic, you know, but balanced. So as I was saying for Robert, he needs to balance upper body, lower body, and for uh, Brian Jones, he needs to uh, balance upper uh, front to the back. So he needs to really put some major time developing the back. So I was very impressed with Mike Sommerfeld. Can't remember if he's from Germany or Austria, but he was yeah. in the first call out, but then in a couple other call outs where they brought the top guys, he was not in there. So the judges must have changed their mind about him. But still, I think fantastic physique, beautiful shape of portions on this guy. Beautiful shape and physique, more leaning towards the bodybuilding fullness. He was, he, for me, he was like too full for a classic. Okay. You know, this, this, is, this is how you have to differentiate. I mean, uh, we know what we're looking for in, uh, in the open division, right? Oh, if anybody's flat, oh, he's flat, he's flat, he's flat. Well, in classic physique, oh, this is too full. <laughs> this is how I see it. I think that he, if he emptied the glycogen a little bit and dried out a little bit more, he has a classic physique, look beautiful, you know, shapes, lines. Uh, so I, I really think that, you know, he moved down after they realized that. I mean, he, he was like, not eyesore, but, you know, you can pick him, oh, this guy's a... Uh, you know, super dry condition in, in a flatter, and this guy was round, muscle bellies, and uh, uh, I think he was a little bit too big. A couple of pounds, if he can drop by the finals, he would be a contender. Uh, Peter Molnar, yes, we were expecting Peter Molnar, uh, most phenomenal upper body also. Uh, not as big discrepancy, upper body, lower body, like Robert, but his legs still need to, to come up. From the back, they look pretty weak. Yeah, you know, Upper body is to dream for, you know, the, the strided, you know, dense muscle, lean, super small waist. I'm a big fan of Peter Molnar. Uh, I would put him in a, in a gym under the squat rack for like a year and then bring him back. Uh, Danny Yuanen, yeah, again, in pretty good shape, but uh, in this kind of lineup, you know, it, it's, it's hard to make a top 10. And uh, uh, so to solidify this, uh, I have a Chris winning, as Chris is really a poster boy for a, a classic physique and a mold that you want to mold everybody into this kind of physique. Uh, Terence brought the you know nostalgic bodybuilding classic look. He has a more of that, you know, the the Serge Nobre, you know, style, especially those front triceps poses that that he does and uh, and uh, aesthetic poses. Uh, but I still think that. Uh, Classic rules has a little bit more towards the classic and structure than to bodybuilding fullness and muscularity. Speaking of Danny Union, uh, I only know this because I was my Instagram. He was live on Instagram about an hour and a half, two hours ago, and he announced he's moving to 212. He's all done with classic. It's probably good, a very good idea. I love his physique, yeah. and uh, I pinpointed the other day. So if I love his physique and he's, you know, making the weight, how come I don't place him higher? You know, so it looks like maybe uh, he just needs to squeeze it. He would just need to be a little bit, uh, you know, maybe fuller to, to be competitive in, a, in a bodybuilding. And I don't think he would ever be top three Olympic contender in classic. So might as well try your luck in, a, in a 212. Best of luck, Danny. We like, so, we're rooting yeah. for you. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's it. We're going to do confirmation round and finals tonight. Things can change. Guys can get fuller. Guys can lose their condition. It's only 50% of the judging is done during the daytime now. Finals, it's things change all the time now. People move up a couple spots, down a couple spots. Yeah. But I don't see Bumstead unless he did not set his alarm and he took a nap and doesn't show up. But, you know, one more thing, you know, related to all this stuff. I think the classic physique should add a couple of more poses, especially like a front, last spread, last spread, you know, because you're looking for the structure. So give a little bit more, yes. Both of us, uh, we don't want to spend the five hours in pre-judging and five hours at the finals. So I understand that officials don't really want to compare and compare, compare. But maybe you could cut out 
like 90 seconds bikini walk that, uh, okay, you can just walk so many times front and back. I mean, 60 seconds is enough. <laughs> yeah, 45. You know, but, but then give a little bit more uh, pose. We all like competition, and actual competition is comparisons. Even last year, uh, last night for the Open Division, yes, uh, top guys were compared, but uh, I would like to see much more, a little bit more, you know, second group and then, uh, you know, mixing it up. Uh, let, let's touch the subject also of, of a man's physique. Man's physique, we all agree, from uh, Lee Haney to uh, uh, the, the uh, Dorian Yates and everybody else, uh, that uh, shorts has to, you know, probably move up a little bit. So maybe you make that shorts uh, like a classic physique originally. First two seasons of class. Yeah, yeah, just to have, you know, displayed legs. I think it would be much more welcomed by all of us. Oh, yeah. You know, so uh, this is uh, one idea. <laughs> it's the yeah. only division that covers up a large yes, part of the physique. Look, Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger on the stage presenting the Ferguson with his title. This is why you're wearing the, the shorts. I mean, but he's speaking the truth. Yeah. You know, let's face it, this is physique contest. Yeah, sure. It's a whole physique. Don't encourage guys to just go to train upper body and, and cover the legs. Well, and here's another thing. Don't get mad, guys, physique guys, but... If you're gonna have shorts, you need to have big. You need to have some calves, because that's all we see. We don't see your quads, we don't see your hams, but I see a lot of these guys with. Very, I know calves are a, mainly a genetic thing, but yes. I see very few, de even decent calves in men's physique. If that's all we're gonna see from the waist down, guys, hit those calves a little harder, man. Give us something. Yeah, but I don't think the calves are even judged in the no, men's no, physique. So you know, that's how they don't want to do it. Uh, but uh, many men's physique guys have great legs, yes. and they would actually welcome the opportunity to show it. And I think that's something to consider. I mean, uh, I understand these established rules, but rules do change. I mean, uh, back in my day, you know, we had a symmetry, muscularity, posing round, and everything else. Speaking of that, one more, one more thought. Sure. Because we don't have a, um, a judging of the um, presentation, posing round. Right. We have uh, embarrassing posing routines of uh, all the open division uh, guys that do just a mandatories, stick the tongue out, walk left and right with the stomach out. Come on, come on. Yeah, which, which really it doesn't do nothing for the sport. If you do, you know, judge, okay? And there was that discrepancy that Sergio Oliva deserves higher placing because he had a better routine. Even in my time, it's not routine and movement that was, uh, that was uh, judged, it was Displayed physique now poses under that mandatory is that uh, you know exemplify your physique to your best uh, capacity. So this kind of thing and uh, why do we have uh, people putting ten thousand dollar award for uh, the, the best poser? Because they want that posing routine is nostalgia from uh, Lila Brada, from Francis Benfado, Sean Ray, you know Kevin Lebroni, Muhammad Makavi. Let's do something about it. I know that uh, they say, okay, who cares? But if I'm a student and I'm not going to get the grade, you know, for some class, why would I even study? Right. You know, that's uh, that's uh, our ability, <laughs> and and uh, you know, so, so this this is what we do. So anyway, this is uh, speaking my mind a little bit. That's why you're here. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe nobody wants to hear it, but I still have to say it. Not everyone's going to agree with it. It's a subjective sport, but you've been around the sport about oh. 40 years now? Yeah, oh my God. It's close yes. to 40. Yes. A little longer than me. As a matter of fact, yeah, 1981, so it is 40. 40. I mean, you, you, got a, yeah. you got a little, a little, a couple years on me with that, so I respect your opinion greatly. I always appreciate hearing. Yeah. I know some people aren't going to agree, and that's okay. We don't all have to agree, guys. It's all about opinion. It's well, the, most of the people don't agree with you and they me. Don't, that, they don't, they don't. That, uh, <laughs> that Rami uh, looked good, and uh, that's probably leading. I understand that a lot of people are saying, oh, you know, Milos was drunk, there is a, you know, muscle development, uh, uh, that, uh, what did I see? Look, if there was uh, aesthetics that was uh, um, put uh, ahead, yeah. Dexter Jackson would beat Ronnie Coleman back in the day, and uh, there is a, uh, you know. every year. <laughs> yeah, there was, there was many things, you know, so Rami is uh, twice as wide and overpowering. I love Brandon's physique. Yes. Now, when they say Brandon was in better condition, I say, you know, I second uh, that, you know, uh, check it out. They were very similar condition, yeah. very similar condition. I keep hearing Rami was off from people that are watching the stream, and I say, I was sitting right there, right behind the judges. He was not off at all. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is how I said. And if he was off, he was 
Ted off from here last year's condition. Last year he he was straight first place uh, across the board, and uh, he's what 305. Let's say 290. Yep. You know, but to to be fair, uh, Brandon Curry, if if you go pose by pose, beat him in the front double biceps pose. Hmm. Beat him in the side poses, which was shocking because uh, Rami has that crazy. Split between the yes, and I do think that uh, he was squatting down too much and it just didn't make that uh, you know pose look right and then uh, Brandon would uh, you know turn around and show you know chest shoulders arms everything with the abs and appear bigger and fuller the triceps pose especially you know if you pay attention so from the back poses uh, yeah he could go either way you know but then again there's always that factor upper body lower body balance uh, if you don't have uh, legs to match your upper body you have pretty much disadvantage in every frontal pose right. you know so this is why I think that uh, Rami is still winning even though uh, I would be completely okay with uh, Brandon winning because uh, you know for me that's my favorite type of physique right. in the whole show so if I would you know want to emulate you know some always said you're a big shape fan you're yeah. not all about just mass and Brandon is uh, this I hope that uh, both Brandon and Rami you know bring a little bit tighter condi condition you know, tonight, so we're gonna have an even bigger show. And we all wonder what happened to uh, Hadi, you know. Uh, apparently, it looks like it's not uh, conditioning, it's not, apparently it looks like they're, they're maybe being penalized for uh, shoulders uh, inflammation. Okay. This is this is the, the, the feeling that I got. You know, so uh, Nick Walker or uh, uh, Hunter, you know, I was saying, yeah, yeah, I think that Hunter, because I like his physique better, when I look at the, the review again last night, uh, you know, Nick, you know, could be right now solidified in third place because he is, uh, you know, just like dominant. A lot of guys, a lot of Walker Nation fans are going to be very happy to hear that. You hear it, guys? He could get third. He could. I mean, I, I think, and listen, a lot of people around the world, me included, would want not just top two guys being compared. You know, being third and fourth, you know, that, that's okay because normally you, you judge six people, yes. you know, so if they're gonna all have the same chance of being compared over and over again, right? Yeah. Somebody might be getting better, and then soon enough you're gonna start changing the opinion, which happened even to me when I was, you know, trying to judge Texas show. Mm. I've seen uh, uh, Steve uh, Yambalier and uh, uh, Feel hey, and uh, in the first round I seen one thing, and then the second round I start changing. And then, but the end, of the car, hold on a second. I made this decision in the first call out. Now I'm changing it. Yeah. So this is how probably judges would uh, do it too, if there is a little bit more comparisons. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll find out in just a few hours. I want to make sure I thank High Tech Pharmaceuticals for their sponsorship of our coverage. Makes it all possible for us to be here and do what we're doing, providing this coverage live from Orlando or close to live. So guys, we'll be back for the finals tonight. Go to musculardevelopment.com on the Noble Forum. We got the play-by-play -play thread. We have a contest gallery on the website with great pictures. Go to our Instagram, Muscular Development. Awesome pictures, professional shots by this guy behind the camera, Hector Mendoza. So much more to come. Keep it right here, guys. Thanks for watching.